Hello and welcome to number 11 in our series of 12 podcasts with me, Ricky Gervais. Hello, uh, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And Carl Pilkington. Right. Now, Carl, you have become a phenomenon, okay? Right. right. This uh, is a, a new story that's gone everywhere. It started, I think, in New York, Reuters, and then that's been taken up by every Reuters network everywhere, India, uh, all over Australia, England. Okay, here it is. The headline is, Podcast Makes Britain an Unlikely Internet Icon. Britain there, B-R-I-T-O-N. Okay? Now, this is uh, the story by Mark Egan, and it uh, came out of um, New York originally. Unemployed British radio producer Carl Pilkington has become an unlikely superstar by using the medium of podcasting for his bizarre statement about eating an animal's private parts. Remember that? <laughs> yeah, it was, it was more about, like, that reality show. That, right. well, it says that here. It was during a discussion on yeah. the Gervais show about a reality TV show where contestants were asked to eat an animal's penis. Uh, Pilkington um, made internet history while talking about this, it says, right? First, he said he could not eat an animal's penis in the morning because he had a delicate stomach. He then proclaimed, using the British slang for penis, I could eat a knob at night, okay? <laughs> His knob soundbite has become so popular that a Google search for I could eat a knob at night yields more than half a million listings, okay? <laughs> Among them are T-shirts featuring the slogan, okay, and Pilkington's bald head selling for $17. Oh. Why did I have to make a point about your bald head? I, I, I don't know. What's, what, why is that getting a little mention? <laughs> wow! It <laughs> doesn't matter. I see the T-shirt. Have a look at it. <laughs> no, I mean, what, what, what is bald? I'm not buying one then. It's not going to make any difference. Either you, you want a T-shirt with me, I don't know, or you don't. It's not an issue. <laughs> all it says is, but among also, them are t-shirts featuring the slogan and Pilkington's bald head. I also liked it when it said, Pilkington plays the village idiot on the Ricky Gervais show, okay? Now, plays the village idiot suggests that he thinks you're a character, that character being a village idiot. The problem is, the fact that you're not a character, to me, suggests that you are just a village idiot. A global village idiot. Yeah. Mm. Now, Just on, uh, the, on the websites, though, when it said... There's loads of websites about eating a knob at night. Yeah. Have they looked at each website and gone, yeah, that's to do with the podcast? Yeah. Or is it just like gays and that saying, oh, I love a bit of knob at night? <laughs> <laughs> it's, a it's a valid question. It's a valid question. That's why you're an internet icon, Carl, because you say things like that. After Gervais mused on the show that the soundbite could be used in a dance remix, it took just a few days for the internet to be awash with songs using the soundbite as a hook. So what do you think of that, Carl? Oh... Uh, what well, I mean, is, is it big in, in India? Well, what? I don't know. It's all, it goes around the world. This is a story. I know, but I just can't the believe world. the problems that... If I was in India, I wouldn't be getting upset about someone in London talking about a knob at night with the problems they've got. Well, I don't think anyone's getting upset in India. No, He's just saying, saying that the information. I can't world. imagine people walking around India. You know, have, you, have you heard that song, Knob at Night? <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine that happening with the... You know, they're hungry in that and it's dusty and everything. <laughs> That's your don't. image of India, is it? They're hungry and it's dusty. I, I assume it's, you know, the parts of India that aren't dusty and in poverty. There is a lot of poverty in India, but there is also, you know... Yeah, but these it's, parts it's of the... It's a major civilization, and, uh, and the people uh, that, that live in apartments with, with uh, uh, computers, they probably might tune in. But, but I don't think it's an issue all over the world, is it? Because there's some places where they eat dogs. They'd go, no, at night, not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> might not be a bad thing. Why is that out on a t-shirt? I had one last Wednesday. <laughs> not, not an issue. What, what, what do you mean? No, I mean? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, again, if there are cannibals listening, if it's, it's you know, in places that, that you wouldn't travel to, and that they get hold of a little laptop and an iPod, and they listen to that, I can eat enough at night, then they're going, what's the problem? What's the big deal? We, all, we, we love a knob at night. Yeah, we so love a little knob at night, yeah. Bollocks in the morning, knob at night. That's the rule. But what about the fact that they're saying you're a phenomenon, a global phenomenon, because when you were, you know, a tiny little, um, round-headed mank mm -hmm. growing up in Manchester, you could not surely have ever anticipated that you would one day be described as a phenomenon, an international phenomenon. But, you know, uh, at the end of the day, I went to that school, you know, with a kid with a big head and webbed hands. <laughs> now he should be being talked about. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's maybe he doesn't want to be talked about. If if you've grown up with a big head and webbed hands, the last thing you want to be is talked about. He wants to he wants to put on he a pair of into society. He yeah. wants to put put on a bit of uh, a pair of mittens and paint his head like a crash helmet, so people think, oh, it looks like a big head, but it's probably just a crash helmet. Yeah, just go about his business. Yeah, I've noticed. 
won't get stopped on a bike or anything. Yeah, but I say if you've got something that's a bit weird, use it. That's what we're doing. That's exactly what me and Steve are doing. We have got something that's a bit weird and we're using it. And I want to uh, speak to the people all around the world. Thanks for listening. But how famous can you make Carl Pilkington? Are you a journalist? Please write about this for people who probably haven't listened to Carl. Uh, d talk about Carl Pilkington. Put a little poster up in your window. I love Carl Pilkington. Print a badge. Give it away. Email your friends. Tell, uh, tell one person about this podcast and let them discover the, the amazing beauty that is Carl Pilkington's mind. Right. Hasta la vista, baby. I'll be back. I'm here to tell you about Friday Night Comedies on Channel 4. There's three great comedies. New Green Wing, it's nearly ready. My name is Earl and the It Crowd. The great new comedy from creator of Father Ted. Get your ass to Mars. Friday Night Comedy, this Friday on Channel 4. Switch it on. I'll be back. Uzi 9mm. Cause they did a divorce. The Ricky Gervais Show on Guardian Unlimited. As ever, Rick, there are hundreds and thousands of emails coming in. Um, people contributing all kinds of stuff, pictures as always, and uh, little video clips that I think might be of interest. And of course, as ever, lots of questions for Carl as well, just to sort of try and tap into his brain, see what's going on there. Question from uh, Jade Ramira. Carl, what would you change if you were in charge of what kids are taught in school? Right, you know, because, I mean, your school experience was a bit iffy. You got very bored, didn't you? You got very disillusioned by school. Yeah. What I'd do, right, is, uh, instead of keep sort of teaching kids about two and two and that, she's four, right? <laughs> well done. Um, Show off. <laughs> um, I think they should be asked more questions that make them think rather than something that has just got an answer. I totally agree. I totally agree. Right? So, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, so teaching them the, 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 the quest for knowledge, uh, inflaming their imagination. But just freaking them out a bit as well, just going, like... <laughs> See, I knew that's where it was going. Because <laughs> yeah. as soon as you started talking, Rick, I was thinking, you're thinking some of the big existential or philosophical questions, you yeah. know, what it, does it mean to be human, what does it mean to interact with other exactly. humans, to be a human. Or, or, or teaching them sort of, like, philosophy on a basic level that, you know, teaching them the love for learning, so, yeah. you know, get them up to a roots level so they want to learn and then they will learn, as opposed to just teaching them facts. Whereas... He, he was thinking, <laughs> freak them out a bit. <laughs> yeah. No, just like, you know, like I read the other day, um, and someone sent it in on email, like, how there's a, a, a dishwasher that's been found on Mars. Rubbish. Woo, what? Right? But it's not true. So, so tell them that. But it's say, not true. Go home and write about it. How did that happen? But it didn't Get happen. The, well, it did happen. It was in a science magazine. No, it didn't happen. There's not in, a dishwasher proper, on Mars. Why not? Because <laughs> how, why not? Why did it, how did it get there? But we're always sending, like, rubbish out there and that. It's like- Not dishwashers. What, you think the- the council take it away and they go, where can we put it? Well, the, uh, the tip's full. We, well, where's the nearest thing we can dump this? Mars, I imagine. No, but the same way that fella who, I don't know, was it two Christmases ago when he was messing about saying I can get stuff to Mars and all that, um, he did it wrong because he did it on, like, Boxing Day and I just think nobody's concentrating. No one wants to work on that day. It's kind of like, do you know what I mean? They're gonna do stuff sort of half arsed aren't <laughs> sure. they? On Boxing yeah. Day. So, it didn't really get there, I don't think, but it crash-landed. What right? are you talking about? What was he trying to do? He was sending something up to Mars. Yeah, that little, that little fella that wanted to get something on Mars and it, it, it got- probe, you mean? And it didn't open properly. Yeah. It got there, didn't open But, but the thing is, it got there, it didn't open properly. No one's been back to pick it up. And what I'm saying yeah. is, we're saying about going to Mars as our next planet, it's a tip. There's loads of stuff that's been no. floated up there. No, it's not. <laughs> it has, it's, it's all, it's just all, like, that probe thing is still there. Rotting away. Yeah. So- Ipso facto, there is a dishwasher on Mars. We've yeah. settled that. Why would they have a dishwasher on Mars? Would they take the dishwasher up to the space shuttle in case they had dinner parties? What are you talking about? I just think they would have a little dishwasher in there. There's a lot of them. Tight space. You don't want to be- who's gonna do that? You know, that means- Do you know how much fuel it takes to move a kilogram? Yeah. Out of the Earth's atmosphere? So they're gonna take up a dishwasher, are they? Sorry, but what are they cooking up there, Carl? How many people do it take to fly a rocket? I <laughs> how many people? Tell me how many people. Uh, well, it's either one monkey with a banana shoe that feeds it, or probably two or three humans. Right. Say it's three humans. Yeah. Now there's three humans because they need one to steer it, one to like be going. Yeah, we're all right. Yeah. One, one, one to make the, some more doves. One, one to one, one to stop at the petrol station no, to get what, more. Yeah. What I'm saying is, if you're going to start having a sink, then whoever's they washing up. They haven't got up, a sink. I know because they've got a dishwasher. <laughs> He's got you there. 
but anyway, I'm not, I'm not going to go into that. But all I'm saying is teach kids things about... Say to them, right, when you go home tonight, there was dinosaurs knocking about ages ago. How would you have lived with them? Get on with it. See you later. Well, they didn't. I've told you this before. You, you got a lot of your information from the Flintstones and One Million Years BC with Raquel Welsh. There weren't dinosaurs knocking around where there were little fellas knocking around in furry pants. No, no, but just sort of saying to them, all right, then, here's a different question. Go on then. Would it be better um, to have dinosaurs knocking about now whilst <laughs> we're here? Because I, I put that in my diary the other day, that, that <laughs> when you think about it, there's a population problem. Yeah. There's too many of us. Yeah. We're saving people all the time. No one's allowed to get injured anymore. You've got to, you know, wear a helmet when you're on a bike. Yeah. There's speed bumps to slow people down. Zebra crossing. <laughs> cures for illnesses. No one's dying anymore, right? Well, I think they are. Not, not as many as they should be, because yeah, the world's think, crowded. All I'm saying I is think it's- there's still people dying. I think, I think there's still people dying. Not that many, though. Yeah, I think there's still a millions handful, of people a handful, dying. Apparently, a handful. Lo yeah. Loads of people are living longer, and yeah. that's that's a problem. So, so you feel that you should introduce Tyrannosaurus Rex just into wandering say about, wandering London, around. just have them wandering around, just picking people off. That's what. Just, just you know, just sort of random and that. Because I, I don't know. I mean, I'm not wishing that anyone I know dies and that. But all I'm saying is, I don't know anyone who's died for ages. Right. Whereas if a dinosaur was knocking about, you'd go, oh, oh, yeah. Neil's gone missing. Yeah. And Annie has been had her head bitten off by a Whatever. I just yeah. think it then it is survival of the fittest. Which yeah. is we've lost all that now. You don't even have to be fit to survive. They just keep sticking a new lung on you. <laughs> or, <laughs> do you know what I mean? They they, they can they can do too much now to keep people going. <laughs> they just keep sticking a new lung on you. Question from Kevin. He says, Carl, other than the famous boxing match that you've often talked about, I know that took um, up about twenty minutes of your time, have you ever been in any other kind of fight? Uh, I don't suppose a, a slanging match. I think they're talking of ever been in a physical fight. Um, once that I can remember, it was over a over a woman. <laughs> well, a girl. <laughs> I was at school. Yeah. Um, and it was because like it's hassle, isn't it? Right, relationships when you're younger. How you're old not, were you? Um, about seven. <laughs> <laughs> it was over a woman. <laughs> <laughs> go on then. Yeah, go on. And there was this girl knocking about who, you know, she was, she was quite good looking, everybody liked. And, uh, my mate, he really liked her. And, uh, I, I didn't sort of ask her out on that, but she just sort of took a shine to me and stuff, right? And, uh, didn't really go out with her properly. It's at, at that age where going out with someone is just like s sort of going, all right, in the morning, do you know what I mean? You just sort of <laughs> nod your head. Yeah. And that. Anyway, there was some sort of school disco. <laughs> and, um, they were playing Spin the Bottle or something, right? And uh, I sort of wandered over to see what was going on. And I stood on this girl's dress and put a hole in it. <laughs> and she started crying. I was like, oh, I can't be dealing with this, right? <laughs> Couldn't, I, I, you know, what's up with you? It's a hole, what's up with you? And everyone's going, Carl, what are you doing? That's meant to be your girlfriend and that. You should be sort of saying, oh, I'm sorry, and giving her a hug and all that. And saying, it'll be all right, we'll sort the dress out. I said, oh, I can't be dealing with this. No. Right. So she's crying her eyes out, I said, it's over, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, it's over, you saying? Right. In the morning. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No yeah. more of that. Yeah, there's no more. Right. In the morning. So I go to the toilet, right, and uh, this lad who fancies her comes in and goes, you're out of order, you know. I'm saying, what are you on about? So you, there's two seven-year-olds. Seven yeah. You're out of order. <laughs> Keep out. <Yeah. laughs> Cut it out. <laughs> Show her a bit of bloody respect. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, where are you wearing trilbies? Yeah. <laughs> he put his cigarette out in the sink and he just said, leave it. <laughs> Get out of my face. <laughs> so oh. I, I just thought, I said, look, why are you getting involved and all that? <laughs> <Are> <laughs> yeah. Two seven year old. Yeah. Why are you getting involved? <laughs> and, oh, uh, and, it, and it was obviously like, because, you know, he, he fancied her and that. We yeah. had a bit of a fight in there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I I accidentally, you know, sort of chipped his tooth on a sink. Right? Wow, is it like a proper- <laughs> Sorry, this is like someone from Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels. Yeah. What are you talking about? Two seven-year-olds in a toilet. I, I, so I, you put you put a hole in her dress. I don't know how that. What were I you wearing? Know, I just stood boots? on it. I just <laughs> <laughs> how, did you, how did you make a hole in her dress? I don't know. It was like that that sort of material. You were like, wearing winkle pickers, like <laughs> crepe. You know what I mean? It was like a crepe dress or something. Yeah, right. And that so got a hole in it. But, so, so you're having a, and when you say you're having a fight, I mean, are you wrestling with it? You got he so arm locks and headlocks. A little head bit locks? of wrestling and sho shoving about and that, and it was an accident. I didn't sort of go right. I'm going to break your teeth or anything. It's just yeah. that I happened to push his head down, 
and and his tooth hit the sink, mm. right? And it chipped and yeah. what have you. After that, like I, I sort of left there and stuff, and we had to go into assembly. Uh, and there was a copper in there doing some presentation, saying, "Listen, kids, you know, don't get into trouble, because we're out there and we'll get you." Right, so sort of try to teach the kids young, not to get into any trouble and stuff. So I'm sat in the assembly room, thinking, "Oh God, there's a copper here talking," and it like my mate's going to come in in a minute, like with a chipped tooth and everything. And, and questions are going to get asked. That's what kind of happened. I mean, the, the coppers didn't get involved. Yeah. <laughs> did you turn your back on violence after that? Then? Yeah. Uh, well, well, he, he said you'll never take me alive, copper. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, that, that was the sort of last fight. Brilliant. The Ricky Gervais Show on Guardian Unlimited. Some of the questions coming in now, Rick, are just, I don't know what they're intending, what, what response they're hoping for, really. This is one from Rob. He just says, I was just wondering, what are Carl's views on the human appendix? What do you think, Carl? What do you think of the human appendix? Never worried about it. What? Well, no, I think Rob's point is that it's sort of pretty uh, redundant now. Yeah. The appendix is, used to be a, a, an organ that, that was packed with um, these uh, these enzymes that help break down things like cellulose. But because of our diet now, and because, the, uh, you know, cooking and, uh, and other things, we, we don't need to eat a lot of cellulose. We don't eat very, very low-grade things like, like, like rabbits, for example, huge appendix and cecum, and they, they use it to break down the cellulose. They actually eat their own uh, feces to get it through again. But we get a lot of nutrients out of food now. We eat very rich food, so we sort of don't need the appendix. And also, when something goes wrong with the appendix, if it bursts, it can infect you and you can die from it. So sort of what's the point in having it? We don't need it and it can only cause us harm. That was the question, I think, that Rob was put into you. So now what are your thoughts on the human appendix? So th this is kind of what we talked about before where... <laughs> He always says that. He always says something like, oh, we've talked about this and, and the thing that we talked about is nothing like it. Yeah. There's, there's never... Go on. No, but just like, um, in the way that we've messed with our body and we've messed with the world too much. Yeah. If we've got an appendix, we, we must need it. If it's dangling about, right? Well, no, because su such is the human evolution is, uh, that, that, as you said before, you know, it's no longer based on survival of the fittest because we can, we can fight nature and combat it. So our evolution, I I if you like, socially and, and everything else, has it, it, it been much faster than our biological evolution. Yeah, but what, evolution. What, I, what I mean is we've, we've obviously interfered somewhere along the way. And, well, and we, well, we have done. interfered, yeah, yeah. we shouldn't have done. Because it's, mm. it's the same way, like, uh, if, we'd, you know, if we didn't have planes and that, would we have wings now? If we'd have no. needed to get about, <laughs> no. would we have had wings? No, the answer's no. Next. No, but but you say that, but look at the way- Because he's right, he says it because he's right. No, but all I'm saying is you see that little picture of like an ape to man. Yeah. At first, they're crawling about on all fours because probably yeah. you're looking for food, so you want to be down there. So right. if, you, if you're on both legs, <laughs> yeah. you're missing stuff that's on the floor. What sort of time period do you think this- Because, I mean, we started, uh, pl you know, dabbling with a plane maybe a hundred years ago. So what sort of time period do you think this little thing who's scrabbling around looking for food I stood up and I walked? don't know. I, I sort of don't worry about time. Sort right. Of behind, well, I'll tell you now, we wouldn't road. have wings now. If the Wright brothers had said, oh, forget it, we wouldn't have wings now. What would happen? Right, here's, here's another question. This is one that I'd chuck out to kids as well. We were talking about education, teaching kids stuff. Sure. What would happen, right? Uh, we ruin this world, right? Goes wrong and that, right? They shut it down. They go, we're moving. <laughs> we go to another planet. It's as simple as that yeah. in his world. It's as simple as that. We can't go to uh, Mars because it's full of stuff that used it's to be in Dixon's. It's like a tip. Yeah. It's a nightmare. <laughs> so we can't go to there. We go somewhere else. So you find another planet, wherever it is, right? Yeah. Wherever um, it is, yeah, easy. Something that I've always wondered about, if we do that, do we start New Year's or do we carry on? What, do you know what I mean? Do we say, oh, it's still 2006? Or do we go, oh, it's world, it's world new, or whatever, yeah. new world? That is definitely the first priority, you It's know. year one, right, we've sorted that out. Right, now- Well, it depends, doesn't it? Because it, right. a year might not be the same on this planet. To, we'd sort that out. Right, we'd sort out what, what year it is and that. Well, no, no, um, no, no, what I'm saying is, we, we'd have to start again anyway, because the planet might not take one year as we know it to to go around the sun. It might not take a day to turn. A day is, is a day, because that's how long it takes. Yeah, for but the, we'd have to carry on, as we know, because we don't want to start doing longer days and that, otherwise it'll just kick off and say, this is rubbish, this new world, what are you doing? No, I'm we doing wouldn't a have a choice. We wouldn't have a choice. 
a day is how long it takes no. the planet to, to, to day, turn, a, a and a year is how long it takes that planet to go around no, the but, sun. but once. a day is man-made, really. There's places in the world where they're working in the dark, isn't they, in Iceland and that. But they don't go, well, it's dark all the time, so I'll stay in bed. Uh. Well, no, but there's still a day. It's still 24 hours in a day in Iceland. Yeah, but that's- we only work by that clock because that's what people use at the moment when they go, what time is it? You go, it's twenty past No, no, no. We use that- that because that's how long it takes the planet we're on to- to-, to I, I've turn. never worried about it like that. I've just always- Well, no, I'm telling you- Well, because you weren't asked to get involved when they came up with the idea. I'm telling you, just, that's what a day is. It's yeah. how long it takes your planet to- to- yeah. What would you mean? The way that, what? No, I'm- I'm just saying that's fine and everything, but if when I was born people said, there's twenty-six hours in a day, I'd go, fair enough. I'm not going to argue. I'm well, not yeah, gonna, we could have I'm made that by long an hour. Is yeah, we could have made an hour shorter and get twenty six. Well, in. they're saying they're going to do that because, well, no, because no, they're not. No, they are because no, there's so not. many people in the world. Yeah, this is what I was talking about before. They've got to create more jobs. The only way to have more jobs: keep shops open, take on more people. Everyone's happy. That makes no sense at all. <laughs> right? <laughs> Safety's twenty eight hours in a day. Yeah, it'd still be twenty four hours long as we used to know it. No, you'd have you'd have like oh, what time is it? Oh, it's it's like twenty past. Uh, Twenty-five or whatever. <laughs> well, you're, you're not making any sense at all. No, I'm just saying. The that. Earth would still take twenty-four hours as we know it now. It, forget it. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on a minute. I want. Uh, there's more interesting territory here. Let's say we've got to our new planet, wherever that is. It takes fourteen hours. Okay, to you know, to to do its turn. So we call that a day, right? So we've now yeah. agreed that fourteen hours is a day. But nothing. It's going to take ages to get the town centre built and that. If people are, if you've only got, I'm going with you. I'm defending you here. All right. So we've got, so we've got that. We've established what the day is. We've established what a year is. Right. It's year one. It's Carl year one. What next? All right. We've got all the people. We've moved to another planet. You said you had a bunch of other questions. Don't forget, our sleep patterns have evolved on a day. The reason we sort of like go to sleep at night and have about eight to ten hours sleep is because that's our evolution. No, but that's only yeah, that's just because what that's what we've got used to, isn't it? Yeah. You look at a sloth, that's asleep all the time. Yeah, that's got the same watch as us. It's doing <laughs> yeah, what it wants. But it, it evolved differently, didn't it? it yeah, evolved but, but, on it's, the, but it's on living now in two thousand six, so wake it up. Right, you can't <laughs> get away. You're not getting away with this anymore. If you want to live now, join in with us. <laughs> Well, it's that time again. Uh, it's the feature that the world is saying could rival Monkey News one day. Ready? Oh, what's he written today? <laughs> well, Carl's diary. You didn't yeah. explain what it was, Carl's diary. Actually, as some one person said, if we are going to get it published, we could maybe publish it as the diary of an idiot. Very good. So, um, you know, a little riff there on one of the most famous diaries. Sunday, got up. Sunny day, so I went for a walk in the park. There was a bloke walking down the street who was whistling. Uh, some kind of annoying tune. He seemed quite happy with himself. Do people only whistle when they're happy? I don't whistle very much. It's a good point. I I'm whistling is so inane to me. But yeah, be, be, <laughs> it's all like going. I'm 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 content. I'm. Uh, it, it it really is that thing that if they go, uh, you go. Well, um, Mr. Mellows, I'm afraid uh, I've got some bad news. Not only has your wife died, but you've lost the house. Thanks, Doctor. <laughs> Won't happen. Won't no, <laughs> that's you don't right, whistle it, yeah. when you're sad. The other place you hear, it, of course, is uh, changing rooms, and that's men going. <laughs> I'm whistling, so I'm not looking at your cock. <laughs> How could I be? I'm concentrating. I'm whistling. <laughs> <laughs> the lake was frozen over where I was walking. The ducks looked worried. <laughs> <laughs> they were sat on the edge of the lake, waiting for it to melt. Where are they, Carl? Yeah, they were just sat there, looking, sort of going, "Oh, what's going on?" <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> How, how long is a duck's memory? Because I wondered whether they're going, this doesn't seem right, but I don't know why. I asked Suzanne <laughs> why ducks don't use their wings much. They seem to walk and swim more and don't bother using their wings. Suzanne said she had to call her mum and dad, so I never got an answer. <laughs> the old excuse! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Suzanne, oh, I can't talk now, Carl. Um, Gotta I've... phone my mum. <laughs> there was a marathon type run going on in the park. It reminded me of the time when we were moving flat. It was the day of the London Marathon. Me and Suzanne were walking down the middle of the road, taking some stuff to our new flat. I was carrying a lamp and a kitchen bin. People were clapping me, thinking I was doing some kind of fun run. Uh. <laughs> Why were you walking 
walking on the same route. Because I, well, it was when we lived on the Docklands. Oh, uh, brilliant. There was, there was no other route. The flat was just about 100 oh. yards down the road. They're going, look at the bloke with the bald wig. <laughs> He's carrying a lamp and a bin. Took a bag of old clothes to Oxfam. It was just old t-shirts and a couple of jumpers with holes in it. I don't think anyone will buy them. But the Oxfam is closer to the flat than the wheelie bin is. <laughs> On the tube on the way back home, saw an advert for a book about a woman who works in a funeral home. She went into work one day, uh, she goes to work on a body, she takes the sheet off of one of the bodies, and it looks exactly like her. This is called a doppelganger. The What's thing, a doppelganger to you? It's the thing I read about ages ago where, um, someone was, uh, walking down the street. Yeah, and he sees somebody who looked a bit like him. And, no, this was weirder than that. Go um, on. Um, he, s he he remembers like going down that street as a kid on his bike whistling, yeah. And then he sort of he's walking down the street going out to get some milk or whatever from the shop. Little bike comes whizzing past. He hears the whistling. He goes, "That's weird." Looks at it. It was him when he was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> so Don't it's like a time talk shit. What do you mean it was him as a kid? This this is like a different form of doppelganger. It's just, uh um, well, it's impossible, it's rubbish. Some sort of time thing, isn't it? No, no, it's it's time, but that's so impossible, so don't worry about it. It's just some kind it. of time thing, Rick. No, 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 yeah, it's just something you read thing. again on the internet, or it was a short story, or something someone told you. Mm. On my walk back from the tube, I saw a jogger who was pushing a pram at the same time. The kid looked terrified. <laughs> <laughs> Got me science book out. It said that the static you get on the telly when a channel isn't tuned in properly is radiation that is still knocking about from when the Big Bang happened. I thought about the Big Bang and wondered if it was really a Big Bang or did it just sound louder as there was no other noise to drown it out. <laughs> Good point, though, isn't it? Carl's diary, Rick, never ceases to amaze. More from uh, that next week. <laughs> Hey, fool! Don't give me no back chat, sucker! I ain't here to mess with you, I ain't getting in no plane. I'm here to tell you all about Friday Night Comedy on Channel 4. Hmm. There's three great new comedies. New Green Wing, yeah, fool, that's nearly ready. My Name is Earl, and The Egg Crowd. That great new comedy from the creator Father Ted, sucker. Friday Night Comedy, this Friday on Channel 4, fool. Switch it on, or I'll be around your house. You stay up all night shivering, cause you be so mad scared. Fool. Oh, well, it's that time now. Yeah? It's the big one. Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news! <laughs> right, it was this, uh... Monkey? This fella, right, who, uh... He had a problem with his eyes. Right? Yeah. So, uh, he goes to the doctors, and he goes, uh... Oh, I've got a problem with my eyes. And he goes, yeah, they bad them, right? <laughs> he goes, uh... It was in America, you know, like, how you have to pay for, for medical stuff and all that. Mm. And the doctor said, oh, if, if, if I fix them, it's going to be, like, ten grand, right? Mm. He's like, but I haven't got the money, doctor. He goes, well, I can't help you then. You know, there's a lot of people with bad eyes like them. Can't do anything for you. Mm. So he goes, oh, it's getting worse. Can't do anything. Oh. So anyway, so he goes home. Is that the price of human eyes, is it? So he goes home, he's looking in the paper, right? And he, he sort of sees in the adverts at the back. And uh, there's a little advert there saying, cheap doctors. Right. <laughs> no, <laughs> oh no. no. So he's thinking, oh, maybe that's maybe that's what I uh, maybe that's what I need, right? So he calls him up. Woman's there. She's like, wait, what can I do? Because I've got bad eyes and that. She says, oh, come in tomorrow. We'll sort them out. She's like, brilliant. I'll see you then. Right. So he goes down there, and uh, he says, right, you know, I, c I can hardly see. My eyes have got in really bad state and what have you. Right. Need to have them sorted out. I don't know what you do. Whatever you do, right. I need now, doing. His eyes are so bad. Can he see the doctors? He can um, not really. He's sort really of squinting. squinting and that. But you know, so, uh, so he's like, uh, do I need to see the doctor to you know have a word and tell them what problem? She's like, no, nah, don't don't worry about that. Don't worry about just, it. No, uh, I'd, I'd I'd be comfortable if it's a just a just you know just let me inject you and uh, we'll knock mm. you out and we'll we'll get on with it. Can, like, get well, the it's, it's, can I just tell you something about um, chimps as well? Just before you continue, Go on. you know they don't have opposable thumbs. Now why are opposable thumbs useful? Really? Well, to to grip something, to do anything like you know even simple. Uh, stuff like writing, so let alone surgery. So without an but opposable thumb. Can I just check now? So if I was a doctor and I was doing any form of difficult surgery, would I need opposable thumbs? You'd need opposable thumbs to be and a doctor. And without opposable, you couldn't do anything. You could. Thanks it, for clearing that because up. Because because um, uh, the, the opposable thumb allowed something in our evolution called the precision grip. Right. So without that, you couldn't do anything. I'm just glad they've got that cleared up. Thanks. 
So anyway, so he's had the injection, he's nodding off and what have you, and his eyes are sort of closing and that, he hears the door open, he, he sort of just sees this little fella come in and he's like, hello doctor, and he's trying to like, make a chat with it, sure. but like, he, he's just it? nodding off. Uh, no, well, just, oh, just he's never called a doctor. These, these people have done seven years medical Deeply training. respected people. How could you say, call it it? So anyway, he thought, oh, it's weird he didn't answer, but you know, doctors can be quite moody, you know, they're highly intelligent, they don't need... Especially idle, little airy ones. Well, just idle chit-chat. There's no room for that, do you know no, what I mean? Like, I'm yeah, just, it's just, it's just, oh, yeah, but you know, if, I, if I'm going in to have my eyes done, I want a little bit of idle chimp-chat. So anyway, time passes, right? Yeah. Uh, he sort of wakes up and uh, he opens his eyes, right? And uh, it's brilliant, he can't believe it. Oh, he's a perfect? He's had, he's had, he's had the op. He, he can't believe the sight. He's like, nurse, right? And the nurse comes in. Because I can't believe it. This is brilliant. I've never had this such good sight. Do you know what I mean? Even when I was a baby. Yeah. And my eyes were new. Yeah. I didn't see this good. Great. So she's like, well, you know, that's... that's you realise the nurse is a panda. That's, that's what we do, right? So, uh, he said, right, so can I just see the doctor and just say thanks and that? And she's like, well, to be honest, you know, he's, he's specialising what he does. Uh, there's a lot what of a load of bollocks this is getting. <laughs> Please, like, where did you get this from? No, come on, let's hear the end of the news. There's a well, lot of there's a lot of like operations he's got to do. Yeah. Um, so you know, leave him to it. He's just having a kip. You know, I'll, I'll let him know that you were grateful. Yeah. Uh, you know, pay us a check. Off you go. Go and enjoy looking at stuff. Yeah. So uh, he says. Uh, he said, No, I just just what's wrong with that? I just want to see that. No, like, no leave it. Just leave. Yeah, exactly. Like, leave it. And he's he like, he's like, yeah, but I can't. You know, I, I want to thank him. So he's done such a good thing for me. So they're getting into a bit of an argument and what have you, and the voices are raising, right? Mm. Uh, door gonna opens. Gonna wake the doctor up. Well, mm. that's what they did. They woke it up, right? They so, will get uh, it. So the door opens, right? <laughs> Little monkey comes out, oh. and, and he's like, "What's what's what's going on here? It's a hospital. Why is the why is the uh, a monkey knocking about?" Yeah. So the woman woman said, well, "What what do you mean? He's the doctor, right?" <laughs> so sh so he's like, "You are having a laugh, aren't you?" She goes, "Look, don't complain. You, your eyes are sorted. Yeah. You know." The doctor's done it. What, what, what's the problem? He said, well, if I'd have known that, I wouldn't have come here. She said, well, what do you mean you didn't know that? She said, the advert in the paper you read, it's uh, like, chimp doctors. That is the biggest load of shit I've ever heard. That really is the worst. It's what, and he, so he, because his eyes were so bad, he thought it said cheap doctors? He saw the advert and, and it said, it said chimp doctors, but because his eyes were bad, he just saw what it. What journal is this in? It was, it was years ago, because it sort of says how the monkey sort of carried on working for a few years. Uh, he couldn't do anything about it. Then just retired to, to play it. golf. It's absolute bollocks. It's there's no to... way, there's, there's, uh, I mean, it's not even worth talking about. So. It's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. It's the most ridiculous monkey news you've ever heard, and that's saying something. Chimp, chimp doctors. Cheap. It's easy mistake. <laughs> well, that's the end of another podcast. That's, uh, week 11. We've got one more to go next week. So uh, go to wickedgervais.com, see some of the things we've been talking about, register, so we can let you know what's happening when we're, when we're back. Who hosted this podcast? It was the great guys at Positive Internet who host the world's number one podcast, The Ricky Gervais Show, with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant, bye bye and Carl Pilkington. Right. Hi, Ricky Gervais here, with me, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And Carl Pilkington. All right. Welcome to uh, the final episode in our series of 12 podcasts. I say final. It's final of twelve, but um, we may be carrying on. Go on. Well, next week we're going to try and uh, uh, do another one to continue this for at least a little while. Um, we may have to charge a small fee for it because it's uh, it'll cost us money, um, and Carl is uh, unemployed. But we we mean a real tiny little fee. Um, but uh, hopefully we will be back next week. Now. Um, we're not sure where it'll be. It'll probably be on iTunes, but just go to rickygervais.com and we'll guide you there. Hurrah! Yay! Um, and thanks for listening for this long and uh, supporting us. I hope you continue to support us. Go on, continue to support us. Yeah, particularly Carl, who has no money whatsoever and is desperate. He's a desperate man. I, right, there's Carl? no one out there going, oh, they're charging for it now. But, you know, people forget we gave 12 for free. This is it. So quickly people forget. We're big shots. Yeah. Well, Carl's not, but, um, you know, we are, aren't we? Exactly. I mean, we, yeah, we were generous, but we're not that generous. We're not, we're not mad. And Carl needs a, a little bit of money. Look at his little round little head. He's like little tiny Tim over there. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Look at him sitting there. Carl, you've had a good week. Uh, it's been all right. Yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> well, uh, more, well, more of that next week. You have to, <laughs> you, but you'll have to pay for it now. <laughs> I'm surprised you're not buzzing because uh, we just had our photograph taken to enter the Guinness Book of Records for the greatest downloaded podcast of all time. We went along to the Guardian and the press were there and they took a little picture of his round head, didn't they? Yeah. 
But I, I don't know why, why should I be excited about it when it's just- it's Have you always wanted to be in the Guinness World of Records? Not- not really, no. I, I've got- I, I've been looking at the, uh, we, they presented us with the, the, um, this year's, and I've been looking through it, and there's some fascinating ones. I used to yeah, get this Yeah, but that's- that's what I'm saying, though. There's loads of things in there that I used to go to. Like, I looked at it online the other day to mm. see if, you know, what's on there. You click on it, the home page that you get when you click on Guinness Book of Records, it's a fellow with the most ear hair, right? <laughs> Looks amazing. So that, to me, is what the Guinness Book of Records is about. So not you're impressed with the bloke who just happens to have the most ear hair? No, but it's commitment. He could have he could have shaved it off, but he didn't. He left it. Yeah, we, no, it's less commitment. But we, yeah, that just grew. We we actually bothered to do a podcast. All right, to get that then, the one with the rings on the neck where they stretch the neck so their head's tall. That's commitment. If that mm. didn't work out, he's stuck with that head, and he didn't even get in the book. <laughs> you're stuck with that head, and you have got in the book, so be happy. Uh, what if it's a stitch up? What if you're under roundest head? I'd be a bit annoyed. Why? Just because I, d I don't. I mean, have you got a choice? Say, like the fella with, um, you know, the small man. Say if he's he's not happy about being small, he's trying yeah. to go about his life. He knows people are looking at him, pointing at him, going, "Look at him, he's tiny." But does he want to be in the book? Oh, I think I think they've got to give their consent. Have they? Because if the, if if the smallest wasn't willing to be in there, they'd go. The second smallest man is so and so. He was willing to be in here. Yeah, but we the smallest one is Frank, and he didn't want to do it. So again, he's in it without wanting to be in it. <laughs> no, but I don't know. <laughs> he's got you there, Rick. I don't know if they do. I don't know if they go around. I I, I think that you'd have to um, uh, be complicit in it for them to measure your head and say this is the roundest head on the planet Earth. Not you know what I mean. But then what do we do with that? That's what I'm saying. Is it something you put on a CV? I don't no, no. see the point in it. Well, I think you are the fellow with the roundest head, and I well, think a lot yeah. of people know that. Because also, I've noticed when people ask for a picture of you, they don't say, can I have a signed picture of Carl? They say, can I have a signed picture of Carl's head? Which is a weird thing to say about a human being, isn't it? They go, ah, uh, oh, look at his head. Look at his head, not look at his face. Or can I have a picture of him? They say, can I have a picture of- have you got a picture of Carl's head? Why- why are they allowed to Doesn't mention matter. that? And the thing is, like, we're, we're on some sort of broadcasting medium where you don't even see me, Ed, so it's not important. Well, I can't see you, Ed, because the mic's perfectly round and it obliterates it out like an eclipse. But what I mean is, it doesn't matter, does it? For doing what I do, it doesn't- it doesn't interfere in any shape or form. But the thing is, Carl, what people are fascinated with, and I've said it before, you've got a head like a fucking orange. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be charging for more information like that from next week. <laughs> We do, of course, Rick, every week get thousands of emails. I mean, it's crazy. It takes us ages to go through them and, and read them. And we, are, we are going through them. We are reading them. Freddie Gerstrom from Winchester says, uh, of course, it was recently Valentine's Day. What's the most romantic thing that you've done for Suzanne, Carl, that you can think of? Uh, I, I don't really do all that. Sure. Uh, the Valentine's Day stuff. It's just, the problem is, if you do it once, they expect it every year. Yeah. Sure. That's that's the problem with Christmas and stuff, innit? It's like, it's become, that's what you do now, every <laughs> year. <laughs> every day, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I prefer to just sort of wait, you know what I mean? And, and, you know, if I think of an idea or I know of something that she wants, I might get her something, but I might not do it on Valentine's Day. It's that thing, it's like how I've, I've said about Pancake Tuesday. <laughs> Make it Pancake Wednesday. Have it when you want. Why yeah. am I waiting? Why am I waiting for someone to tell me when I can have a pancake? I'll have it today if I want one. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? There's Pancake Tuesday, no, I won't bother, I'll have trifle. So, <laughs> so it's the same, same with this, you know, with Suzanne, um, luckily, right, I mean, Valentine's Day and what have you, she was, uh, she was ill. Luckily. So, we didn't, we didn't have to go out. So, I'd say, is he asking for advice? Well, I suppose, yeah, certainly he may as well give it. Treat them when they deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. I remember, uh, once when Suzanne was ill, she had a fever, but there was no... Food in the house. What did you suggest to her? She was too ill. Well, to it cook. was it was when we were still living in Manchester and that, and uh, you know uh, we needed to get some food in for tea and stuff. And uh, I said, "Come on, come to the supermarket." She was like, "No, I'm ill. You go." And I ate buying food. I, I just sort of get a bit blank when I'm looking at it. It's too much, isn't it? That's the problem. You go down all these aisles and it's just too much. <laughs> so anyway, I said, "No, come on, come with me." She was like, "Oh, but I've got this fever. I'm hot and everything." So I said, well, come to the supermarket, you go on the frozen aisle, cool yourself down. <laughs> <laughs> and she did, and she said, you know, it made it worse, she was ill for another three days, but... How would you, uh, go about chatting up a woman in a bar? What, what tips could you give? Um, I've, I've never, I've never worked like that, it's always been like a friend of a friend and all that, and, 
just happened to meet him. And then, you know, you have a chat, and then- How did you meet Suzanne? Uh, that was when, uh, I was working with her, and, uh, she gave me 20p for, uh, the hot chocolate machine. She never asked for it back. I thought she's alright. <laughs> um, been there sort of 11 years, so it works. Has she ever given you that, uh, she ever, have you, have never you ever, you've never given that 20p back? never asked for it back. And did you return the favour, perhaps on the next date? Uh, you buy her a Kit Kat or something? No, I don't think I did. I think, I think word got out that, um, she liked me and that. And, um, what did I do? I think I did some work for her, did some editing for her, to sort of show off my skills and that. <laughs> sure. And she was like, oh, you're good at this, aren't you? I was like, yeah. And I think she got us another drink, because I was, I was doing that editing for her, in my own time. So you're up. You're up on the deal, aren't you? Because I, I know now, I know for a fact, that you've not spent any money <laughs> on her in 11 years, so you are, you're 40p up. <laughs> At least. Lawrence from New York says, I was wondering how Mr. K. Dilkington would interpret this famous saying of philosopher Ludwig Wittgenstein. The quote is, if a lion could talk, we could not understand him. Even if he's English? Yeah, if he, <laughs> yeah, if a lion could speak English, so there's no language barrier, he's speaking English words and using all the correct, uh, grammar and everything, but you wouldn't be able to understand what he was saying. Why? Because it is from a different world his frames of reference would be so bizarre that you wouldn't be able to get a grasp on what he was talking about because you'd have so little in common, even if he used real words. No, but he's talking English. Yeah, no, but his reference points would be just so far removed. You know, they're removed slightly when, uh, uh, if you saw two people talking about Kierkegaard, you'd, un you'd, you'd... I hear wouldn't understand that. Exactly. So remove that a billion times to a different species with different input. No, but it depends. If I'm talking to a lion in London Zoo, yeah, he'll he'll be saying oh, I'm fed up with being stuck in here. I'll go, yeah. <laughs> it's like that. It depends what his background <laughs> is. I mean, there's some people who might have lived down the road from me, but have a totally different life. Absolutely. So it doesn't matter that it's a lion. Does it? Well, yeah, because they're just trying to remove it even more. So, so now it's not just a bloke who lived a few doors away. Now it's not even a bloke. Now it's not even. Yeah, but I'd I'd pick something smaller yeah. or right. or something you know a worm without a mouth. I'd go definitely not. What? Definitely, definitely not, not what? what? I wouldn't be having a chat with it. I just I just think that a worm that's that's on the ground. Yeah. What's it got to offer me? He's, he's blind and it hasn't got a mouth. It's not going to be a good day out with it, is what I'm saying. It's not going to have that much to say to me, even if it's English. Right? <laughs> even if it's and English! And how can you tell if a worm is English? Is it wear a very tiny bowler hat? <laughs> oh, Christ. But do you understand- What about a jellyfish? No, I, you see, I think that's where you, you can- you can say you wouldn't be able to have a good chat with them. Because, to me, the sea might as well be another world. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, in a way, I, I think the fish sort of have more rights than us. What do you mean? Just because when when whoever made the world, right, yeah. say, you know, we're just bigging up God, but if yeah. I was, was to have a go at him, yeah. I'd say, you added too much water. <laughs> <laughs> Criticism one to God, right? right? So... <laughs> you how would you have changed that? Just... Just more land. Fair enough. Now, why <laughs> why are the, why have fish got more rights than us? That because was was because because there's loads of them, and when you look at the amount of sea on the world, right? There's there's loads of that. You only have to like like you know I was in Malaga the other week, right? And you know you look in the sea, there's loads of different fish, uh, and that's just in like eight foot water. If you go miles out, there's like all sorts of weird fish, isn't there, with like lights on them and everything. So. And they're just millions of different types. Yeah. Yeah. Now- <laughs> But why does that mean they've got more rights than us? Just because I think, wh you know, rights come in, in numbers, don't they? If you know what I mean. Like, if there's one of you shouting, people go, oh, he's an idiot, shut up, whatever. If there's loads of you shouting, they go, oh, best listen to them, see what they've got to say. Right. And, and that's what I mean about fish. <laughs> yeah. There's loads of fish. Right. So- But they're not really making their voices heard, though, are they, Carl? Yeah. I know, because they're underwater. But what, but what I mean is, I don't know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> the Ricky Gervais Show, on Guardian Unlimited. Oh.
please to meet you, start me up. I'm here to tell you all about Channel 4 Friday Night Comedy. So start me up. Now then, there's three great new comedies from New Green Wing. That's nearly ready. My name is Earl and the It Crowd. The great new comedy from the creator of Father Ted. Ow! Friday Night Comedy, this Friday on Channel 4. Switch me in. It's going to be a winner. Carl, right? What what do you think it's like being a crab? If you, if you could go now, your mind, into a crab, what would you see? Where would you be? What would you be doing? What would you be thinking? What do you think of all the other things, the crabs you'd see, the, the, the squids you'd see? What, what, what's it like, do you think? I want you to, it's like creative writing, just think, just let yourself go. Come on. Uh, it's gotta be a crab. What do you think of a slug? What do you think it would be a slug? What would you do if you were, if you were transported now into a slug, what would you do? And you, and Suzanne, you're suddenly in the kitchen but you're a slug and Suzanne's sort of like there, just making tea and that. How do you let her know I, it's I, you? It's impossible. I'd just chuck myself into the salt pot or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, because what, what do you do? I'd, I'd hate that. I'd hate, that would be horrible, that. God. Have you ever read uh, Franz Kafka's Metamorphosis, I in which a man so. wakes up and he's turned into a giant beetle, and that's the yeah, that's the whole story? Uh, I think it might be of interest to you. So what happened to him with the beetle? Well, I don't want to ruin it for you in case you no, read I it. I won't but be reading it. Don't worry. He joined a pop group with three other people. He was brilliant. No, it's a really wonderful book. It's a kind of almost heartbreaking because, of course, he uh, he does like Ricky saying. He finds it very hard then to relate to other people, even though he still has the consciousness of a human. You know, his parents, his re- rest of his family, they don't know how to deal with him. You know, because he, he's a giant beetle, he becomes a freak. He becomes an outsider. It's terrible. You but know. but hang on though, is he a giant beetle? Or yeah. Is he, well, yeah. Well, that's not going to go down well, is it? <laughs> That's, that course people aren't gonna like you. But if it's a normal sized one, then you just get in with the other beetles, don't you? <laughs> Whereas if you're but a giant- How would you do that? How would you ingratiate yourself? Right, so you're suddenly a beetle, you're Carl Pilkington, right? There's other people, they're doing their business, they're scuttling around, and you go, you go in there and you go, and they go, they look at you as a new beetle. What, what's your first, what do you do? How do you ingratiate yourself? Well, for a bit, I wouldn't, I wouldn't sort of barge in into their house and that. I'd, I'd wait until they're out and about. And I'd, I'd like, like in life, right? Um, sort of help them out. I don't know what beetles do all day. I've never seen one doing anything. They just seem to be going from one place to another. Right. I've never seen them carrying anything. I don't know what they eat. I don't know what they do. <laughs> I don't know why we've got them, right? But what I mean is, I'd watch them and I'd sort of help them out. And I mean, you know, it's like going on a date or meeting a woman, isn't it? But what if you there is? Whoa, a hang on. What do you mean? What, what, how is it like going on a date with a woman? Well, it's like I said about Suzanne with her hot chocolate. She bought me that and I've gone, she's all right. 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 She gets me another one before I know it, she's living with me. <laughs> so, it's, you treat- So you're, you're, you're these, these beetles, they're scrubbing around, right, you're sort of like watching them and there's, and then you realise that you want to mate with this female beetle. What do you do? What's your first move? Yeah, but I don't know what beetles do, do I? So I don't know how, how what you do. I don't know if you go up and go, all right. What do they do? How do they get on? Well- It's a different world. I, I don't know yet, do I? Because they haven't done it. Would but you feel bad? Because having your own mind in this beetle, right? Would you feel bad shagging a beetle? Would you feel that that was that was a bit sick? Because you've got a human mind. Well, no, because you just close your eyes and that, wouldn't you? And go oh, pretend to think of something else. So get round it that way. There's no point getting down about it because I'm stuck now as a beetle. So you've <laughs> got to get on with it. <laughs> but if you're a slug, you said you'd throw yourself in the salt pot. What would you do if you were a beetle if you got depressed? And you see all the other humans. No, you see your mates, right? They got they're listening to the iPod. What would you do? But no, that's what I'm saying. Though beetles are different because they do <laughs> tend to hang about with each other. A slug's always on its own. <laughs> it's a lonely insect, isn't it? It's, it's not an insect. All right, what is it? A mollusk. Right, they're lonely. I've never seen a load of snails all together or slugs <laughs> wandering about. Those beetles <laughs> seem to knock about in crowds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, oh God! Okay, all right, another one. So there are sociable creatures, and it wouldn't bother you that you're that you've got the mind of Carl Pilkington in there, because you uh, can't communicate with these people because they don't speak English. They don't. They don't have any communication with you. Yeah, but if it's happened to me, there'll be another one in there. Okay then. Right. Okay. Um, what would you do, right? <laughs> that's, 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 
disgusting thing. What could it be? Um, right, what, what would you do, right, if you were suddenly a fly, right, and you were knocking around with the flies, right, and you had to land on some, uh... Excrement? Yeah. What would you do? Yeah, but I don't have to. What do you mean? You're a fly. You're yeah, loving but I it. wouldn't. No, I wouldn't be loving it. No, would I? <laughs> Why? Because I'm me in that fly's head. <laughs> so I'd, I'd just. I don't think other flies would be going. Come on, join in. I'd just be like, no, I'll, I'll wait here. What? Wait, watching that. Because they don't. I don't see why they have to do that. What would you do right, if you had to go back and you were in a? Um, you were had to go and put your mind in like the um, an unhatched uh, egg of something. Like, maybe one of those, e like, like uh, that a wasp was injected into a spider. So you know you're in an egg, right, which is really uncomfortable, in a spider. How would you feel about that, Carl? You're a baby wasp in the abdomen of a spider. And I know everything that I know now. I'm, I'm sat in there. Yeah. And now I'm, now I'm in a spider as a ba- as an, an unborn wasp. What the fuck am I doing here? What's going on? I don't know what I'll do there. Uh will they try and sleep? <laughs> There's nothing else to do though, is there? <laughs> I just pray to God it never happens. The Ricky Gervais Show on Guardian Unlimited. I don't believe it, he's written it down! The <laughs> well, that's the jingle that signals it's time for more extracts from Carl's diary. And uh, we'll lunge straight into it. Wandered down Carnaby Street. There was a happy homeless fella. I gave him one pound fifty. I thought of a tongue twister after giving him the money. It goes, if you can't treat a cheerful tramp, what sort of tramp can you treat? It's good, that. All Say right. it fast. If you can't treat a cheerful tramp, what sort of tramp can you treat? Yeah, good, isn't it? Good, that, yeah. You've got too much time on your hands, Carl. <laughs> Learned some famous quotes to see if they are as good as my sayings. Number one, treat every day as if it's your last. Very famous saying. Now, is that something you do, Carl? Um, but you know, me, me problem with that one is that if it was your last, you wouldn't want to be doing much. That's, that's the only problem I've got with that. I wouldn't want to, you know, go to a fairground or whatever because you're going, oh, it's my last day, what am I going to do? And I think you'd spend so much time worrying about what you're going to do that you'd end up staying in. I think you're right. Um, you've taken some of the poetry out of it. I think it means live life to the fullest, right? I like the fact that you were musing on the idea that if it was your last day, you'd go to the fair. <laughs> 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 it's getting such a 19th century way of spending your final day. I know, yeah. yeah. Um, well, the thing is, the, the other thing is that, um, the only thing that people get depressed about in terms of sort of like, um, you know, life and death is, uh, not the knowledge that they're gonna die, but more the knowledge that they know they're gonna die when they're dying. If someone told you, um, no one ever knows when they're gonna die, no one ever gets an illness, no one ever gets hit by a truck, everyone passes away peacefully in their sleep, dreaming they're riding a big marshmallow, right? Then you wouldn't care about anything. It wouldn't matter when, it wouldn't matter if you died tomorrow or in 30 years time. You'd just live life to the full. You'd come, you'd, you'd have it, every day would be great. You'd go out, you'd come back, you'd fall asleep. That would be amazing. There'd be no stress. There'd be no, there'd be no angsty, oh, we're all gonna die stress. Cause it wouldn't matter. Cause it would just be your life. Wouldn't it be amazing if someone guaranteed you, Carl, you're gonna die in your sleep. I'm not gonna tell you when. Yeah, but you'd... some people do, don't they? Well, exactly. Yeah, no, but I we know never know that. we're going to, cause we, we stress. What if we get a dreadful illness? What if we, you know. I but, know but we're almost not letting people die naturally anymore now because we're always bodging stuff up what do you mean well someone who might naturally die in the sleep aren't allowed to naturally die in the sleep because they wake them up with those electric things and get them going again and pop in a new lung or whatever whilst they're at it that's what i'm saying they don't just na you, you never hear it anymore do you frank peacefully died in his sleep no he died on the operating table whilst we we're putting in a new lung they never they don't die naturally anymore Frank died peacefully with 40,000 volts going through them and a couple of people going, CLEAR! <laughs> CLEAR! <laughs> Rushing about today. Got to get a lot done as I'm flying to Malaga tomorrow to see my mum and dad. Don't like flying. I'd be happy if they give you a parachute instead of a life jacket. They say Da Vinci invented the parachute as well as the helicopter. He never got round to making them though because he only drew them on some paper.
Got up at 5am as I had to get to Heathrow to get on the plane to see mum and dad in Malaga. Went out for a drink with a cousin who lives in Spain. Ain't seen her for 27 years. Oh, that must have been tricky, making conversation. I didn't really bother. Because <laughs> where do you start? I might no, as well so go up to anyone in the street and start having a chat. <laughs> yeah, you have to go further back then. Uh, did you want Chantal to win Big Brother? <laughs> yeah. Me dad and me talked about history. I said we shouldn't go on about things that happened ages ago because I bet something similar has happened more recently. Brilliant. <laughs> Read about an island in the Indian Ocean where there are tribesmen still living like they're cavemen. A helicopter tried to land and the tribesmen chucked spears at them. This is what I meant about not having to talk about things that happened ages ago. We have got new cavemen now, so why do we talk about the old ones? People could have lived before, but computers and all that blew up and books got burnt, so all they had left was what these tribesmen have got left. Ramblings <laughs> that's of the ramblings man. Of a maniac. That I mean, that's a just a few hours before you go crazy with a gun in the- No, but what, what I mean there is, right, mm. say if all this has happened before, right, podcasting's been happening years ago. Mm. Something happens. Again, a right? lot of your information from the Planet of the Apes. <laughs> Something happens. World ends, mm. right? We come back again somehow. Yeah. It's the detail <laughs> it's you that, leave yeah. out that makes yeah. you intriguing. Just like the watch that you can wear that uh, tells you when you're going to die. How does it work? Pop it on your wrist. That's <laughs> yeah. all the detail you need. So, the world happened, no. we came back, we... Uh, yeah. Have you seen the pictures? <laughs> Forget it, then, if you don't get it. It's interesting that you had all those profound thoughts about this this period in the past <laughs> when they all lived, but you still f you still found it uh, appropriate to include at the end of that. It says the tribesmen wave their knobs about when they've had enough of having visitors. That's what's what it said in the paper. That's what happens. They're quite happy. What paper is this that you're reading? It was it was in it was in like a paper a couple of days ago. It said um, they don't mind having visitors if they're bringing them coconuts and stuff that they can eat once they've got everything they need. You start waving the tackle about, and that means, like, right, leave now. Which you would, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, at a dinner party. Uh, my grandfather used to do that. <laughs> uh, well now, well now, well now. What have we here? I'm here to tell you all about Friday Night Comedy on Channel 4. Uh, there's three great comedies. Green Wing, It's Nearly Ready. My name is Earl, and the It Crowd. Uh, the great new comedy from the creator of Father Ted. And what have we here? Jingle, jangle, jingle, jangle as it happens. Friday night comedy, this Friday on Channel 4. Switch it on, now then, well now, young man. Uh, well now, now then, well now, now then, young man. Ah, uh, that jingle is getting more annoyed by the week. Well, this is the final monkey news, right? I'm not, I'm not doing this anymore, right? Because we've we've covered it all. All the monkey news has been covered. It has, it has. We've done, we've done loads of them. I think all the news that needs to be sort of known has been told, right? Um, that is the end of the news. Jesus Christ! <laughs> what? Get on with it. Right? Do you know? Um, in the first uh, podcast that we did. We uh, chatted about the monkey that went into space and stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. So where we left? So haven't you got a real no a new monkey news? Well, it's an update, isn't it? I mean, is it new? Has no, it happened recent? Has it happened since podcast one? I have to pick Ricky up on the point that he thinks any of the monkey news we've heard <laughs> a happened and b <laughs> happened recently. It almost always happened in olden times or ages ago. Uh, oh, you're right. It never happened. <laughs> yeah. Right. Anyway, so like I say. The first monkey news, it was about this monkey that went into space. This was the one that was fed by bananas that came out of a little chute on the spacecraft. Yeah, it went it went up there, uh, did a really good job. It was taught how to press the buttons, hit the left button for a banana, you know. Right button to... To go right, uh, make history and go, go into right space. Right, um... Ooh, what do I want? Not more banana. You haven't taken off yet? Eh, more banana. Oh, we shouldn't have given him a choice of banana or a change history. We should have, they're the right button. We should have fed him before he went and only had a right button. He's at the left button again. He's just eating bananas up there. What's going on? It's costing us a fortune. Hey, oh, fucker. Press the right button and do some of that. Oh, bananas. Hey, he's at the left button again, the little fucker. So anyway, yeah, I told you, he went up there, he came back, he could never get that the high, high exactly, again. Yeah. You know mm. what I mean? He tried other things. I think he tried to get a band together and that. <laughs> <laughs> Right, yeah. so anyway, there was there was loads of monkeys that were signed up to this NASA program, 
and it was 1961 when this little monkey called Ham, that was his name, so mm. a bit of an update. That's that's the same one as I talked about. His right. name was Am. As well as him, there was one called Enos. He he went round the world loads of times. So anyway, what I found out about it since then, um, Am went up there, did the left right business with the bananas. Enos, um, they didn't put as much work into the trip when when he went up there, and something went wrong with the machinery. And do you know how you get a banana for the left button? And all that. Mm. It's official it, now. <laughs> yeah. There's two buttons in this spaceship: banana dispenser and everything else. The right <laughs> button is everything else. <laughs> but but it worked the other way. The machinery went weird. Oh no, really? So so it meant that the right button would give him a banana. Right. The left button did everything else. Oh no! How did so that, what? How did so that what? Been taught, I, what oh, this is the problem with with electronics, isn't it? Well, no, I don't think so. This. <laughs> I Apparently, this is the problem. But the good—I th- mean, honestly, look it up if you want. This is all online, by the so way. So, what mm. happened when it all went haywire? What what occurred? Well, luckily, Carl, Carl, this is online and it's bollocks. Luckily, um, Enos, because he'd, he'd, he'd done a few trips, <laughs> right, he's so he was like, "Well, I know this isn't right." <laughs> as much as I love bananas, <laughs> this isn't right. <laughs> Bellamy's so, thinking, of course it was. So anyway, so he came back, they, they were all like over the moon with him. He you said, know I mean? can't work with these conditions. Good mission and everything, well done on working it out. He sorted all that out. Um, it moved on a few years, Armstrong's gone up there, Buzz and that other fella, they've been up there, the, the monkeys aren't needed anymore. Mm. But they were like, we've got all these monkeys who have done NASA training, mm. <laughs> what are we going to do with them all? Mm. <laughs> and they mm. had to raise £14 million pounds mm. To make him like a, a like an old sort of chimp's home for retired, <laughs> As for retired NASA trained monkeys, chimpanots, chimpanots. Something they've got in there is like a little museum, right, of all the missions and that that they've been on. So they can sort of, even though they're not going to be going into space again, they can almost relive it and reminisce mm-hmm. of the times that they've had. And they're reminiscing with each other, are they? Just, just sort of going, oh, remember the that time when it all went wrong, the button became the left when it should have yeah. been the right and all the rest of yeah. it. They're just, you know, sort talking of about old times, talking yeah. about old times and what have you, like old people like to do. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Um, and yeah, that's it. So if you want to like, give give some money to towards their home, right. you can go to like savethechimps.org and it's all there, all that, all that information that I've given you. It's all there. You can I'd be surprised out. if all the information you've given us is there. It's all there. I'd be very surprised. It's all there, just retired, you know, monkeys and that who have done the bit. Perhaps we should retire monkey news to that same place. That's what I mean. So, you know, I hope you've enjoyed the monkey news and that. That was the, the last one. Look after the monkeys. Uh, do your bit, because they've done their bit. Uh, that's it, yeah. But just because I'm not giving the news, look it up. Do you know what I mean? It's all out there. Don't be ignorant. <laughs> Wise words. Thank you so much for listening to these uh, these twelve podcasts. I- I've really enjoyed it. I know um, uh, Stephen Carl have. Um, this podcast was, uh, as usual, hosted by Positive Internet, the world's number one podcast. Next week, a, a brand new podcast. Um, we have, as I say, we have got to charge a little bit for it because um, it does cost money to host. And uh, please, please keep listening. It, it is going to be very little, and uh, you know, Carl. Carl needs your money. I, if you could see what I see now, he's just looking at me with his... He just, he just needs stuff, don't you, Carl? What do you need? What do you need? Just something more than nothing. <laughs> <laughs> for information on the archive of the podcast, these last 12 shows, and for the new podcast to come, go to rickygervais.com. You can register there. We'll send out loads of information. Uh, plus, you'll just find out links to, uh, to how to get all, these, uh, all this stuff that we're, that we're offering out there. There's also a free taster if you just can't wait for more of Carl's nonsense. Make sure, please, that you register uh, your email and everything so we can get in touch and just tell you what's going to happen uh, with the Ricky Gervais show, with Carl's mind, and with everything else. rickygervais.com. Go there. Makes perfect sense. Uh, it's the it's the end of an era, but the start of a new one. It's almost seamless in a way, isn't it? The end and the beginning. But Carl, what do you think about that? How things end and new things begin. Um, well, I suppose you've got to have an end for a beginning. So it's just a bit odd that we've got an end and having a beginning. But that's science for you. <laughs> <laughs>